Well, here's the thing. Okay. Ah. Well, well, here's the thing. Okay. Ah. okay. Well, here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. What? Slip, 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 cross, cross, cross. What's up, everyone? Welcome to We Out Here MMA Podcast, but now wait. Welcome to We Out Here MMA Podcast, but shut. Welcome to MMA but Podcast, but not show. But shit, look, you know what the show, guys, is. I was too busy shadow boxing trying to show off in front of Nick. And guess what? It messed with my mind. But what you did see was the same combo over and over, and that's what we do here. We bring you the best content over and <laughs> over. Is that right, Nick? It's the basics. That, that work, matter, okay? guys. It's the basics, all right? All right, we don't need to sit on a couch in the middle of a ring in Russia and talk about Rashard Evans. It's all about being here in the internet. And look at Alex's juicy face. See how it's lined up, kind of? That was because of Manscaped. So make sure you use the code WE out here. Guys, I'm here with my husbands. I got Alex, Lift, got a coast. I got Nick, the ear, done. Myself, Gilbert. Uh, a lot to talk about. Specifically, what's the most important thing about today? Alex, you go first. It's what is Chinese this? New Year? It's Chinese New Year. That's the Let's song. Go to Shabulin and eat some Shabulin for Chinese New Year. That's Bitch, the thing to do. It's Chinese New Year is Bitch. when it's when it's Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year, as they say. You go to a Korean-owned Japanese hot pot place to celebrate Chinese New Year. That's the future. Nate, do you have any comments on uh, this uh, Chinese New Year? And also, are you Year of the Tiger? What is your um, your Andy Mall? Well, so first off, I'm going to address you taking shots at our selection for dinner tonight. Okay. The reason yeah. why I'm going the to this restaurant is because all Asians across the land in the East all celebrate uh, New Year. So I thought I would bring it all together because there's been some beef between, you know, the different Asian countries about who has the right New Year. Bro, you know you're sounding I mean? like the Fung brothers now talking about the Asian diaspora. Bro, I'm telling you, the Asian, I don't even know what diaspora means. Can you explain to me what diaspora means? I'll be honest. I just hear those guys talk about it so much. I just say it now. The Asian And welcome to our guests. We have the fun. (laughs) Have you seen, you guys, have you guys ever watched Pokemon and they have that abracadabra guy? And then it's it's him with asthma. Oh, that got it. Damn, Alex, that was terrible. But you know what? I'm with it. Bro, like was it terrible energy. or was it good? Because it made you think. And that's what we do in 2022. We want you to think. Because there's, too, because there's so much going on in this world. I need people to start thinking because Critical actions are being thing. made without thinking. And I need thinking to happen for these actions. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, yeah. what a great way to start the podcast. Um, all sorts of stuff that have nothing to do with MMA. And that's what we do here. We get into the stuff that doesn't pertain to MMA. But we're going to switch gears right now to get to our fight recap. No cap. Uh, and you guys are probably wondering, there were no fights this weekend. False. I did not watch fights this weekend. That's why I would like my two husbands right here from the Chicken Wing Ling Ling Enterprises to tell me on, about their thoughts on Eagle FC. It was, uh, I, I think it was a debut card in the U.S., and I believe that took place in Miami, Miami. Florida. Yeah. Miami. It, I, the only reason I know about the card happening is not even from hearing about it and we out here in May, which is crazy that we didn't do picks for it, but was because on YouTube, I saw the same interview of the same four fighters on every single MMA site. Yeah. Uh, Chael Sonnen. populate the news. Dude, I'm pretty sure it was almost, minus Chael, it was just basically anyone that Ali reps. Did yeah. you watch it? Because right? it's saved to my watch later. On the my actual channel. Yeah, the interview? interview? The 18 minute interview? Did you watch it with all I did guys? not, but I heard Is it the Alex one where they're on not... the couch? <laughs> yeah, that one. The white couch that made no Yeah, sense. weird shot you took at the beginning. Weird reference <laughs> at the beginning of the show, by the way. But look, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. I just thought it was weird that it's like they were trying to do some kind of ESPN thing, but everyone like did not get a dress code. Like Kumar Uzma literally looked the flyest. He was wearing a beautiful like two piece suit, some hot sneakers. Then you have uh, Triple C just wearing street clothes. Did you Even see his below, boots? Uh, Triple C. He got he got extenders. Yeah, like, uh, he got the oh, oh, actually, sorry. I'm that's that's not the same day, but um, <laughs> he, but the day of the fights, he was wearing boots that were like this thick on the bottom, so he could kind of be. He was Dude. still wasn't even as tall as them. He was like to their shoulders, but he wore he, boots. Look like at a pair. Thing. Oh, I got to ask you about that then. And also it was what like Chael Sonnen doing a great job of wearing just a t-shirt. And then Habib looked like he woke up, even though he is the promoter. The dude wore like aces. He's busy. He's tattered busy aces. Today. He wore like uh boot cut capris. Uh, I don't know what they That's were. That's Habib though, bro. 
Dude, like, I've seen him in a suit. I've seen him look sharp. But yeah, suit. but normally like him dressing nice for like a press conference is like jeans and like a black long sleeve sweater. And like just, shirt. <laughs> it's just weird next to Kamaru Usman, who's dressed the tees. Anyways, uh, I didn't get to watch the fight. So we'll start with you, Alex. You had mentioned something about uh, Henry. What are just your general thoughts? Kind of like it as a whole promotion and being in the U.S. And what did you like? What you what did you think was silly? I know you didn't like um Henry Cejudo doing interviews. Yeah, Any no, thoughts? um, it was cool. It was cool fights. Honestly, the production wasn't as bad as I thought it would be for like a beginner. Like, honestly, I'm not even being trying to be funny. And, you know, I love Arizona and shit. And that's my hometown. I usually have to go for people like that. But I feel like Henry Cejudo literally made that show really bad. And what it, reasons? His commentary was so bad. And then him, the interviews in the octagon yeah i was like bro this is like i know he's cringe right that's his character but he wasn't trying to play his character in those moments he's and being it, himself and it was so cringy i was like yo Damn. this is so bad like it felt like he didn't know i'm sure he was nervous and granted if i went and did it i'd probably fuck up like that too but it was pretty bad honestly i was just like god damn bro this is why you know not every fighter in the ufc gets to do commentary they really pick Good out point. the people that uh it's hard it, man the scale yeah. it's really hard i don't know uh, how people do it nick what did you like about the whole production itself did you have a problem with triple c or no, did you just... i thought it was, i thought it was cool I, I i always like when um an mma promotion like this can just get really cool up-and-coming fighters and it feels like it's a feeder system for the Dagestani guys to yeah. beat up old UFC veterans. <laughs> like, that's what it seems like. Um, that Anthony Nanjukwani, I, I believe. Like him, though. I that's like how you that say it. Yeah, bro, he's OG, right? And I, I, th- I didn't know he was still fighting. And then sure enough, he's an amazing kickboxer, but he, he's fighting some Dagestani, like, like wrestler Wrestlers. guy. So, you know, um, the fights were good. I, yeah. I, I was I was watching it on mute because I was at a coffee shop doing some work and I just had it on the side. So shout out to um, Car Chocolate. Shout out. shout out to Phil's um, Phil's coffee. Shout out to Phil. Shout out to Car. Oh, that's my shirt. Okay, you can't see it. Anyways, uh, I was stupid. That was a bad plug. Ugh. But uh, yeah, the fights were cool, man. I like seeing Habib be promoter guy. I like seeing him like kind of talk some shit to you know the other promotions. Like you better be careful. Be careful. Be careful. You know. So I'm, I'm into it. I'm I'm a fan of anything Habib does. I'm oh, trying boy. to get those gorilla energy. And then, and then yeah, question for you guys: know, huh? based on the <laughs> what? Based on the fights, uh, any fights that stood out? Like I'm, I was curious, like how did Rashad do? Like did he still did he look he retired good. or did he, he actually look like a mid level? He looked fighter? actually better. He looked a little bit like he he has new skills. Like yeah, I don't know. I just feel like a guy that's been pro- like like Rashad, who's probably been training with the highest level of competition regularly. He may not be training as intensely or, or training that much, but I feel like. I think he he looks good. He looked really good. So. He looked uh to me he looked like a little nervous to throw his hands, which Isn't I was that Rashad con- though. <laughs> I guess yeah. I guess yeah. I haven't seen him fight in so long. So, but I was like, from what I remember, is him like knocking out Chuck and like yeah. the fights with Forrest Griffin and Quinn Rampage. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, damn, like he he did really well though. I mean, he was able to control the guy on the floor and just do work. But our boy uh Jorgen Jorgen De Castro also fought and I had no idea he was fighting. Yeah. Me and neither. He, and he won by submission against like a 43-year-old like guy, but still won. So shout out my boy Jorgen. <laughs> and Stay then body. uh did you guys was the main event any good? I think the last time I saw Caratano fight was like in Strike Force. So I don't really know what well, he was fighting in Bellator still recently. I think he still is oh. part of Bellator. But that's the last time I remember seeing him fight was in uh was in Strike Force. Yeah, mm-hmm. I never watched him in Bellator. Karatanov. Was yeah, that a stupid was it a stupid fight? Well, you know what? I think uh Tyrone Spong. I'm I'm a big Tyrone Spong fan. I've been following him for a really long time. Um, so but he's known as a kickboxer, really good decorated Great kickboxer. kickboxer. Mm-hmm. He uh spent a lot of time boxing after he he like broke his tibia, I think, against mm-hmm. Bill Konsaki. Okay. So uh I think he's been boxing. So in my head, when I saw that matchup, I was like, man, Karatanov is a pretty big dude. I think he's a lot bigger than Tyrone Spong. I actually did not see the fight. I did see the finish, but um, I had a feeling like, ah, I can go either way. You could see Tyrone knock him out in the feet or Karatanov just taking him down and beating him up. And that's just what happened. So, yeah. hey, that's just that's just what happens when you are we don't have a diverse skill set enough to fight a guy like Kartanov. and he's russian he's scary bro. and he was he's so big, big. Yeah. he's so big 
how much bigger did he look in the cage than Tyrone Spong? A lot. Fat. He has like, yeah, he has the big belly where he walks around yeah. like this. Like he has like a pole. Having that weight on top of you. His head is like this long. It's longer than ours. Gilbert. So I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> That's how Alex's measurement is. Is based on our body types. Yeah. He does this to himself and he puts on the TV. Like, oh shit. He goes, oh shit. Like, that is the guy's whole body. Even on TV, it's <laughs> <is> bigger. <laughs> uh yeah so cool so you guys give thumbs up you'd watch another eagle fc yeah, yeah. and I think if the you, next card is gonna be good man. yeah if you download the i think it's like lfx or some shit the app it's like all the fights are gonna be free and then you'll be even able to flx flx cash you'll be even able to watch all the russian cards i don't know what time they're gonna be for us but they're all gonna be yeah. free so i have a question have you guys been i don't this is not on the news this is just not any topic already know what you're talking, talking about. about it you already know what i'm talking about right mm-hmm. have what? you seen the recent clips of these russian dudes fighting each other at these wayans yeah at the press at these, conferences like, these, yeah these press conferences <laughs> what and promotion is this i don't know it's just some russian promotion and i guess one of them was like fuck it these guys are fighting so much at these press conferences they actually put some gloves on these two guys yeah. and they let them fight at the press conference and they still crazy. fought in a cage I don't know. <laughs> makes I no don't sense. even know what this. I don't know Bro, what the promotion. Honestly, is. Like, Gilbert, I, I have no idea. There's like a new video of these press conferences yeah. every week. There's like and, a fight at every single one. This other guy I just saw. He like ran and jumped, did a flying kick jeans. and kicked the cop. Skinny jeans. Yeah, get, kicked the guy off the couch. Just like, oh my god, I don't know what the hell's going on out there. Or is this, this the promotion? Did they actually make a fake co- press conference and that's the cage? <laughs> like, what is? What are they doing? Yeah. And then, like civilian clothes. You're saying then, there's actual people there, like media. This is a real like yeah, press conference. it's like, like a whole event. Thing. This is so. Weird. And oh, then did you guys God. see the video that they our, our boy Abdul got into like a little he, boxing fight with some other guy that looks like Abdul? Yeah, Abdul Rosic. Dude, I, I gotta see know, your man. guys. I'm losing track. I'm losing I gotta, track. Dude. I gotta see your guys' algorithm on your search. It must be all just Russian shit. It's wild. <laughs> hey, but what's on your you? algorithm? Uh, don't want to talk about it. Anyways, that's what it is. It's mochi just all donuts. mochi donuts <laughs> with little like and Korean little, fried chicken and, and Hawaiian bras. cookies. Just bras on men. What? And Hawaiian <laughs> cookies. Uh, um, all right. Uh guys, let's get into our we out here morning and news. Dude, you gotta make that connected to your like your lap on the table so you can see. I don't have that big of a desk, but I ain't gonna be here that much longer. So does that matter? Are you moving? Wait, hot wait, wait, update. We out here update morning news. Are you moving? True or false? Are the allegations true? True. You're moving? Yes, sir. But Where are you moving? Over to my mom's for a little bit because in Upland? Yeah. Hey, don't uh, reveal his where he lives, man. The, um, I mean in Upland, Minnesota. The, the, the guy here <laughs> um tried to blame the whole entire uh check on me again, the power check. So then all of a sudden he's like, Oh, so for December you owe me fifty bucks and for January you owe me seventy dollars. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? For utilities, I'm like, my utilities are included, it's written down in contract. Yeah, but it was higher and utilities well, it's electricity, but the electricity doesn't count if you plug in fans. I'm like, so you're telling me if I plug in a fan, I have to pay you utilities? Yes, because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't count as electricity. So we got into this what? huge ass argument about it last night. So um, my, I told my mom, and mom was like, "Yeah, fuck that. You're leaving there." She was like, "It's cool. They have this huge RV at the house that's like plugged into the power and shit." She's like. It's a home. Just literally live in it. Then we're not doing anything with it. So I was like, "All right." Wow, that's wild. Yeah, dude. Should we? Once you move out, should we TP that house? No, but we can tell because everything they're doing here is illegal. <laughs> but you say fuck it and be like, "I'm a squat," just just to be petty, you know? I know, huh? Just squat a little bit in California, dude. You could live there for five years before they could physically remove you. I made that up, but you know, Ooh. probably around that. I tell him, like, hey, follow. I have a source that said five years. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and like, he's also he's just, Asian. <laughs> he has a plan in his house. He knows what he's doing. But yeah, it was um, a big ordeal last night. So ask me if it's real or fake. Is it real or fake? None of your fucking business, man. And there we go. Speaking of none of your fucking business, is us entering into the legal battles between Francis Nganu <laughs> and the UFC. Uh, Francis claims to be receiving a lawsuit from the UFC about meeting with Jake Paul's team. I actually heard about this last week. I think they talked about it a little bit on Ariel Hawani's show. Uh, I think Ariel was pressing uh, Nganu about this. And what Nganu said was essentially he was talking to uh, someone from Jake Paul's team 
not necessarily a promoter, but just, just talking. And yeah. I think someone in the UFC flagged that and said that is a breach of your contract. You're talking to another promotion about fighting, but Francis says like, they don't know where they broke the law on that. It just seems like, honestly, I don't even know if this is, yeah. I don't know if, how valid this is honestly with the UFC saying that um, yeah. it just seems like this is just all media news. I think it's a power play. Yeah. On Francis or UFC side. Roses are red and violets are blue. Don't let a wild pube wreck you. Okay. Valentine's day is around what? the corner and our sponsor at Manscaped are here for you with the best tools to get your balls ready for the special occasion. This V-Day, it's time to join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. With our exclusive offer, go to manscaped.com and use the code WEOUTHERE for 20% off and free shipping. Bro, about- Alex, 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 please tell us that story you told us. Yeah, so, because, like, I don't know about y'all listeners, but sometimes your boy get tired and forget to shower. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Oh, so, like, yeah. one day I was out working out, and I, I got home really late, and I was just, like, really sweaty down there and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then I woke Real up, sweaty. and the way that I slept with my legs, they were kind of like this. Like, I woke up, and I was tangled down there. So like every step I took, it was like rip, rip, like just yanking on the on the hair. And oh, I was God. went into the bathroom and I was like leaning over the desk, huffing and puffing. And I looked myself in the mirror. I was like, oh, Manscaped Blumor 4.0. <laughs> went and grabbed that, trimmed them all. So now I don't have to shower for five days, honestly, if I don't want to. And I can go ahead and run a marathon. You know what I'm saying? Look at that, oh, guys. News. He's going to run a marathon because of what he's doing. Now, the number one product in this package <laughs> is the Lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin, Gilbert. And get this the trimmer's advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts, nicks on your delicate balls, Gilbert. And even it has 4,000K LED spotlights. So you can shave anywhere your heart desires. Did I mention that it's waterproof too? <laughs> I didn't, Gilbert. but now you know, Gilbert. <laughs> Go to manscaped.com, use our exclusive offer at 20% off and free shipping with the code WE OUT HERE. Hey, Nick, close us out, please. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WE OUT HERE at manscaped.com. One more time, that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the promo code we out here <laughs> a little late gil that's fine join cupid and shoot your arrow with the manscaped this valentine's, valentine's day. day love you guys love you get manscaped i think both i think there's i think there's both sides that they're not telling us about there's something missing here i don't know what it is maybe it's just like um, an issue of kind of mind games and power plays Cause I think that's what they do is like behind closed doors, they talk and then they go out in the media and they might like release a couple things here and there. So I don't know, man, it's very complicated. I have, I have, like you said, I have no business talking about any of this stuff. Cause I don't know anything about legal battles. Well, you, you just know? get, you just give information on to Alex about what to do with this situation. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's between, that's between boys. That's yeah, between, bro, you know, you and he knows what I'm saying there. is not real. He does. You know Cut I mean? Two days later, I, did, I was I, in jail for trespassing. I, I literally just actually texted him saying I'm here for five years. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, he said a screen capture of your face on, on Instagram. It's like, that's my lawyer. <laughs> and then didn't work. Okay, Nick. Um, guys, Dana White also claims to have no issue with Francis before UFC 270. I think he was talking to Lauren Sanko about this, where he just wanted to address the whole not showing up to the press conference, not showing up to put the belt on Francis. Uh, I know there was a lot of speculation, including from you, Nick, uh, saying that, you know, ooh, he was trying to slide Francis. But uh, Dana says that just something happened backstage that he had to take care of something. Interesting. All right, what happened? What happened backstage? What, what do you exactly. guys Exactly. What Any ideas? Just Alex, go. you Spitball. have the important finger up. So go. So I'm going to say this because uh, Dana White kind of like contradicted himself in that same email. Ooh, or tell email, us, sorry, Alex. In that interview. So he was like, yeah, he's like, I had stuff. He's like, I left right after the co He's like, I had stuff to deal with in the back. He's like, people are acting like this never happened. He's like, yeah, it doesn't happen a lot, but it happened with Michael Bisbee and Luke Rockhold. I had to run to the, the back. Event, yeah. But then he says this. He's like, and then from that, I had to literally sprint out to the octagon to give him his belt. I was like. So why couldn't you do that for Francis? You know, it's like, why couldn't you sprint out to the octagon to put on the belt on Francis too? If you're trying to use that example, because that example don't work if you still put the belt on Michael Bibby, you feel me? Maybe this issue lasted longer. Maybe this took him off base. What's it? What do you think? Yeah. So here's the issues. There's a fight in the back with fighters. Um, that's the one. That's the number one thing that could happen is fight in the back. Nick sure. Diaz is there starting fights with everybody. <laughs> with, with, fans, with fans. With fans. <laughs> yeah, with fans. Um. <laughs> 
Jake Paul, something with Jake Paul. Yeah, maybe. Jake Paul's there. Michael Kies is drunk again. Or oh, Dana White doesn't like Francis Ngannou and didn't want to put the belt on him. I think four might be the right one, but just saying. I think it's a combination of all three. Yeah. I think four. I think it's all four, four of them. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think that he actually slided Francis because that would be so obvious. And I think yeah. that's the last thing he needs yeah, is like that negative attention. I will. I, I agree with you. I don't think he actually did it to do this Francis. It's just but my, terrible timing though. Yeah. Did yeah. you see, did you guys see Sean King coming out? Do you know who Sean King is? Sean yeah. King is who my Lord and savior. He's who I believe <laughs> everything about race. Cause everything he says about race is correct. I did. That's follow all I have to say about because that. like he was posting a lot on the Ahmad, uh, Ahmad Arbery. Arbery. Yeah. Arbery, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Arbery. 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 You say it, the guy's name Ahmad. I love berries, <laughs> but that case, so I followed him. But yeah, I saw that. In like I was I was like ah, I don't know like I feel like he's trying to make it a little bit into a race thing when it's not supposed that's to what be. that's Sean King's mo yeah. dog that's um, how he makes money my thing he's Dana, a good uh he's he he like he loves the UFC he's a big UFC fan yeah he probably, Sean King he, watches it probably he's literally never he's probably watched like six fights and they're probably all Conor McGregor fights but <laughs> the I just think huge like, Conor McGregor fan <laughs> <laughs> like Dana why not just tell us what you're doing unless it's like something would to do with a fight that they can't announce or something like that just be like yeah like you know there was a scuffle in the back or you know we had but he was just like I had to deal with something in the back I'm like really on the paper on a pay-per-view event on the literal last fight the heavyweight title fight you have something that you need to do and you can't be like oh just wait I think I think there's two things. There's two truths. Maybe is that one, he actually had to take care of something, but like you said about the Bisman thing, he had to rush out. I think he was like, I could go back out, <laughs> but I just don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I think there's two truths. He's like, oh fuck, I gotta he's just sitting something. in the bathroom. He's sitting in the bathroom the on, he, on his exactly. phone. He's sitting on a toilet on his phone. <laughs> like the thing he had to handle got like resolved so quick, and he's like, fuck. I know it was. Probably- what, if, what if he sharted, yo? They probably Dude. like ran out of straws and he just needed to go run from one concession stand to the other to give him <laughs> straws. And then he was just like, eh, I can watch the fight I, from the office. I'll say in section 200. It's yeah. fine. I think he uh, sharted, bro. I think he shit his pants a little bit. Dude, your allegations towards Dana are just sometimes ridiculous. I don't appreciate that. You don't think, you don't, how likely is that to happen? How many times have you guys sharted in the past two years? You're talking to someone that used to do keto all the time. I shat my pants okay. every time I talked to you back in the day. Okay. So what about times. you, Alex? It's been a lot of times where like I'm at work and like I fart and then like I'm walking and I'm like, why is it like, I feel like I'm like itchy and I go and wipe it and there's poop and I'm like, oh, so I sharted a little bit when I fart. Dude, I I think I shart all the time because I (laughs) fart a lot, but then I always, I have that same feeling as you, but every time I check, it's just my butt just gets wet. Yeah, my butt gets wet too, but then you know there's shit there when it's like itchy. So then you're like, eh. So then you have to go wipe it. And you're Something like, you wouldn't know, Nick, because you have small glutes. And then there's like, bro, I, shart, I sharted. What? I sharted twice in one week, a couple weeks, like a couple months ago. Yeah. And it was really embarrassing. I was at home, thankfully, but I was like, fuck, dude, this is embarrassing. And it does, it does take a lot of time. And it, you have to sit and ponder. So I think that's what happened to Dana White. He probably shit his pants, sharted. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, you think I have time to come back? And then he got caught up and he was washing his underwear in the sink. And it was a whole fucking thing. Bro, I might have told the story. I, I, I did <laughs> shit my pants in second grade. And oh, cool. I remember I wasn't, this is going to sound crazy, another story, but I wasn't potty trained yet. So the idea is I took, I know it's second grade, it's ridiculous, but I just took a shit in my pants, blamed it on a dog. And then I went to the bathroom to wipe the poop off when I could have just thrown away the underwear, but I just kept the underwear on. So I just had crusty poop underwear and everyone smelt it the whole day. And I just kept saying, I, I just kept saying, I kind of, I can't get the dog poop off my foot. And then a couple of kids, Connor Davis kept looking at me and was like, this fucking guy's lying. I've done that when yeah, I was Mexican like, is lying. when I was like in first grade or something like that, I like accidentally like shit my pants. So I went to the bathroom and like, I just put a bunch of toilet paper all in my underwears and pulled on my pants. So like it was just underwear in my, or toilet paper all up in my underwear. <laughs> That's pretty good though. That's actually not that bad. Yeah. Because for first yeah. grade, it was, it was kind of like good. a cushion too. Because like when I sat hey. down, it was like a bunch of toilet paper, and I was like, "God, <laughs> do you know uh, what really <laughs> is bad? Is that Dino Dino White feels a little too nah, optimistic nah. about John Jones versus Engano for 2022. He thinks that they will fight this year. Um, I'd love to get your guys' take if you think that fight is happening at all. Because we do know that Engano did. So. Wait, bust he said up not his- too optimistic, right? Oh, sorry. I thought he said it was optimistic. Yeah, I'm, he's, I'm like, wait, why would he be excited? Why does he think he's going to happen? Dana White is too optimistic about <laughs> having this. 
<laughs> he's not too optimistic about John Jones fighting Nagano for 2022. I don't think it's going to happen either. As we know, uh, Nagano is probably going to take some time off and also get surgery, even though he wouldn't commit to it. He did say maybe because maybe he wants to take another fight and deal with it. But I'm like, bro, your leg's broken. Get yeah. that fixed. Well, here's the thing with this is like, so from I was listening to Brendan Schaub's podcast and Dana White had talked about Why? it too. Uh, about how he has a championship clause so se- technically that wasn't a title defense that was a title unif- unification mm. so he technically has he has to either fight like one more fight defend his belt or he has to fight once within a year and if he doesn't fight within that year then his contract's terminated so that's Got what they're it. saying is like so oh, if he, shit. no matter what even if he's gonna go get this knee surgery by the time he's all healed up and shit, it doesn't even matter. His contract's going to be done anyway. So, yeah, I don't think we see that fight. I think Francis is done with the UFC. Either by uh, he does fight randomly one more fight and then his contract's done, or he's just going to go get his surgery. It's going to take him like nine, ten months to heal anyways. And I'll be like, all right, we'll wait two more months. I'll just start training only boxing, and then he's going to go into boxing. Wow. Interesting hot news from a hot guy. Tongue, 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 tongue. Is that a new segment? Hot, hot news from, news a, hot from guy? a hot guy. Tongue, hot tongue, tongue, news tongue. from a hot, a hot guy. guy. Uh, guys, second piece of news. Wonder Boy thinks John Jones going to heavyweight is a huge disadvantage to him due to the size of Nganu and Cyril Gone. Um, he made a point. I'd love to get your guys' take on that. Uh, Bisbing, I'd like to give you also Bisbing's uh, take on that. He thinks John Jones will probably get knocked out if he can't take Nganu down. Um yeah, I think let's talk about John Jones a bit. I think we've seen lots of social media videos of him. There's definitely a video out there of him hitting pads. We've seen him working out. So he does look big. He does look large. I would say when I see him hit pads, he looks very sluggish. So he may be bigger. He may look like these guys, but I think it doesn't, the speed does not carry over like it naturally does for Gan or an Ngan who've been carrying this type of weight and have learned to adapt to that kind of a speed and power. Also, I would feel more confident to say that um, John Jones, I would, I'd like to see him roll around with people, just see how he carries that weight on the ground. And then mm-hmm. I would feel more comfortable to make a decision. What do you guys think about John Jones being a heavyweight? Does he stack up against these guys? Or is he, what do you think, Alex? Um, It's like so hard to say just because like we haven't seen him fight yet. But um, I From do- what you've seen. Uh, yeah, and well, here's the thing with Jones, even when he's a light heavyweight, when you see him hit mitts, he's not really like the best striker. The the thing with Jones and him fighting is that he is just one he's one of the smartest fighters that you'll ever watch. He knows how to read people so fast and he knows how to change a game plan and activate those types of things to win a fight. He's uh, to me cuz he doesn't really have like crazy knockout power, right? He has finishes, but he doesn't have like one touch power um he's really smart he has really good wrestling but he's also really long and he and he's really smart in the sense of he knows how to use his his reach he knows how to use his legs remember he's kind of like that first guy to really implement those those uh oblique kicks right to the people's knees and stuff so he's never really to me when i see videos of him hitting mitts even from now or before it's like it's to me it's john jones like i've never watched him hit mitts be like fuck man like he's a monster um but I do agree with Biz being in the sense of if Jones can't tink down Ngannou, he's going to knock him out because then he has to strike with him. And he's not going to be as elusive and fast, and he's not as technical as a striker as Cyril Ghosn is. Um, and uh, Ngannou did pretty good with having one knee against Cyril Ghosn, you know what I'm saying? So, And then for the size, I don't know. Because like Jones is like Jones is also a big dude. Like Even when he's – remember when he's fighting at 205, I mean, he's not – training at 205 he's probably with like mm. 235 240 the whole training camp until like it gets closer to weight cut so he's not a small guy so i don't know if i still think he could wrestle with nganu and wrestle with uh, cyril gone i believe wholeheartedly but uh francis nganu yes i think honestly john jones's toughest fight is going to be like a curtis blades uh i think that's his toughest fight because that's wrestling against wrestling but an actual heavyweight wrestler who is a juke judo a juco champion that's what that's the fight i'd rather see Mm. uh nick uh does there any merit to what Bisping and uh wonder boy said do you disagree agree with them 
Um, I do think the frame of the body has a lot to do with it. I think that does play a difference, but if there's anybody that can overcome that, it's probably a John Jones. It's probably going to be, he's a freak athlete in general. Is he though? Um, I think so. As far as like in the stable of uh, like third generation UFC superstars, you know, I feel like we're on our fourth and fifth generation now of like new wave of fighters. So, but do I think like a Cyril Gaon is probably freak athlete, more of a freak athlete, probably as far as like the traditional sense of the term athlete. But um, I think for John Jones, it does play into what Alex was talking about. His biggest power is his like narcissism and how smart he is. <laughs> Low key. I think, I think like the reason he, I think he really believes in his mind that there's no one in the world that can beat him. And I think that plays very well into being a world champion and having that champion mindset. Mm-hmm. And with his skill set, as far as the way he's able to see things, I think it will play a big difference. With all that being said, I don't know if it's going to be enough for a guy like Ngannou. I think he can compete with him, but I don't know if he's going to be able to, to, to beat him because it's been – it's going to be two years since he fought yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) it's been about two years since he fought right and i i don't know i think the time off might play a big difference especially if he's going into a big fight a very big dangerous fight with the with the francis and ganu so i would like to see him have a tune-up fight i think it's essential for him to have a tune-up fight like him against stipe yeah. I think that's great. I, I think that's that. a great I love that's tester. a tune-up fight, though. I love that that's a tune-up fight. But when we're talking about a guy like John Jones, he can't like, fight like seven or eight. He has to fight one or two. Yeah, and honestly, as far as the matchups go, I do I, think that's a favorable matchup for John Jones. How about this? Either fight Stipe or I think for an actual tune-up fight, he gets to re- get some redemption. They bring back Matt Hamill into the heavyweight mm-hmm. division because he's a little more weight. You know, John Actually, Jones, see what happens. aside from that, has never lost, right? Like, the, he can't even lose to the judges and shit, bro. He's never done, like, any jail time. He freaking hit a girl in a car, fucking beat up, like, his girl. Yeah. Like, he did all shit, and he's never gone to jail once. I mean, yeah. never what's your favorite John Jones crime? Um, <laughs> The podcast. John Jones crime, the podcast. Um, <laughs> Serial. So, I don't know. I guess just him testing positive for the drugs only because he was like, man, I got it from a dick pill. And trust me, I've taken one of those motherfuckers. Those things hit different, but yeah. <laughs> Why are you doing that? You're so young. Bro, I dude, okay. Because I just wanted to see how it was, right? And hard as a rock in like any anything you... Like, how hard? Bro, you let me feel it, dude. Let me yeah, hold let me hand, touch, you know? bro. And it was, I remember because I was with a new girl and I was like kind of nervous, so like I was kind of almost getting like she's a little bit dead of now. You killed the poor girl, anxiety. it's your hard dick. I was getting a performance anxiety, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy one of these pills. Fuck it, I want to see if it works. Shit fucking worked, but I already had like high blood pressure and shit at the time. Oh my god, Alex. So when I took it, bro, I, I got so hot. And man, my heart was racing, bro. But man, I stallion all the way. I was like this. And it was like for little movements too. Like if something, say you just walk by your chair and scrape like, up against so it. So detailed, like, oh, dude. Damn, bro. You have to sit down. Oh, man, bro. Yeah. Shit, oh, I, was, man. I, was, I was ready for a quick bit story, not a whole detailed vein story. So basically, know? what happened was, was I sat down, I drank it eight ounces of water. <laughs> I took. <the> <laughs> I don't know if John Jones needs a dick pill, y'all. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna go on record. This might be controversial, and we might get canceled. Or we our video might get demonetized. But I'm gonna go on a limb and say it for the we out here public. I don't think John Jones needs dick pills. I don't think he does. That's the only reason that was so sketchy. Because I'm usually I'll if I it. like him, I'm like ah, he doesn't do he doesn't do steroids. He's not. But, really. but then a dick pill is like mm-hmm. Matt Sarah mm-hmm. doesn't need him either. He said Matt Sarah doesn't need him either. He's like. But I would be lying to you if say if I didn't take those to have some fun. He's like, they're fun. They work. Why not? It's cool. So, and Matt is my guy. So, I just drink chili oil. Works for me. I heard that if you I, if you mix olive oil and lemon, it's supposed to do almost the same exact thing. No man, I, I just makes a really that. delicious aioli. What are you talking so about? So actually, I just bought some <laughs> olive oil and lemon. Actually, too. So. <laughs> you just see a bunch of bottles of olive oil. It's like next yeah, to clean up a bit. I know you. I know when you clean up because you always show Get us the back. Out. You show us the back of the uh, the dustpan. When it's yeah. front, you haven't been doing shit. <laughs> I got rid of a lot of clothes. Shit. 
Uh, all right, guys. Um, Kevin Holland gets challenged by a keyboard warrior. I love this. I didn't get to actually see the fight, but I did see the headline. So if any of you guys actually watch the video, maybe you can uh, let our audience and me, myself know what went down. I do know that a troll hit him up and then he called him out and bought him a ticket or something to his gym. Is that true? I yeah. think so. I believe so. I did you watch true. any of you guys watch the video? Mm -hmm. I saw the video. It's hilarious. What, did, how like did he just fuck around with him and slap him around or what was the whole he smacked scenario? his butt a bunch? Yeah, he he yeah he so he chokes him out. Yeah, spanking him. The funniest part is after he chokes him out, right? The guy lays like flat, and Holland just fucking slaps the fuck out of his stomach, yeah, bro. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> Poosh. I'm like, oh fuck, my boy just gave him that tap tap, fucking hey. Uh, but it was it was uh, to me. I thought it was enough where it's it's playful enough, but also rough enough to send a message to some of these motherfuckers that you best not forget who these guys are these guys train every like you might do some jiu-jitsu fucking three times a week and you know you might be a fucking purple belt or a black belt or even like a brown belt or whatever or even a brown belt like that's higher than a black belt but it um, was weird that you framed it that yeah. way yeah nice I'm, adcc I'm, shirt you, know, you notice nick said it though like because nick's a brown belt so he's like you'd be a purple belt uh, brown belt's a little different but uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he showed and he's like i'm wearing this hoodie <laughs> yeah there's but there's a big difference between guys that compete regularly and train regularly versus the guys that just have very high skill levels you know so i don't know like this guy might might beat up everybody at his gym but you're fighting against you're wrestling with a guy who literally fights for a living so it's a whole question. different question does it does okay that's a good question what about like a jujitsu fighter doesn't even compete like let's say like henner gracie does he lose like half the times against a ufc fighter in a grappling match I know. that's different he he's different if though. it's so straight grappling no bro nah. not at all there you go. You're wrong. Your, your logic sucks. All right, moving on. But it's Henry Gracie, bro. I'm talking <laughs> no, about like like me. I'm talking about like guys like me. If he's not getting who punched, think they're tough because they train. Gracie. Yeah. You don't but think when they go against. Here's the thing about UFC Nick. Fighters. I'm gonna talk about Nick really quick. This guy hates Nick. 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 Nick Corner. Done. Nick Corner, dude. That's yeah, sick, Nick Corner. Actually. Done. That's actually really good. So here's the next the story we got, guys. No, 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 is Jake no, no. Paul I think. I think Nick. Stop. I think you're dangerous because you're one of those guys that doesn't act all tough, but I do feel like you're dangerous. Like you would hurt someone. Nah, I get beat to. up, bro. I think you would when kill I, somebody. When I, I think when you would I kill someone. If, <laughs> when I train with the guys that fight and compete, your boy gets beat up, bro. Dude, one time I heard that Nate took a, a dick pill and that he submitted the dick pill. So it was like, didn't get hard. It actually pushed back out of his body. It made him <laughs> out of feel. It made, it made you softer. That's how strong you are. You just, <laughs> I wish. Uh, guys, Jake Paul drops. Okay, this is wild. Jake Paul this drops crazy. a diss, music, <laughs> diss track music video against Dana White. I watched it, and I think we have to ask uh, our resident uh, musician, producer, um, uh, hip hop artist. Uh, I don't know what you call it when you scream. It's not screamo, but it's like something else, Alex. What is it called? What do you do? Deathcore metal. Deathcore, me Deathcore metal. Have you seen the video? We have to ask. We have to get your take no, on it. I haven't. Damn it. Okay, what we'll start with mean, me and bro? Dude, oh, you, God, it's, dude. it's I'm, funny. Here, I'm going to tell you uh, something, really. I'll say this. Cyborg, Every week, I Cyborg shows up in the video. I thought it was a fake. I thought it was an actress because, you know, you can't tell sometimes. But yeah. it's Cyborg. I'm going to tell you Dog, something, okay? I Jake respect, Paul I, chokes out Dana White. On the I, re I respect. Hey, honestly, Nick, I just farted, and I actually just think I sharted a little bit. <laughs> it's, like, warm right now in between my cheeks, and it's going to run away, and it feels wet. But, um... As he directs it to me only, yeah, not you, yeah. Gilbert. Not me, it's just for you, me, man. Bruh. You know, and then you know when you like corner. do like the suck in thing, like you like you flex inward with your cheeks because you're trying to like bring it back in in case it's there. Anyways, any so I'm gonna say this: I respect Jake Paul for what he, what he does, right? He gets his money and shit, but I don't like him. So even though he drops a diss to Dana White, I'm not gonna watch it because I could give a fuck. I know it's probably terrible. He can't rap. I mean, so I don't I, care. I, this actually, is your job now, Alex. This is your job to watch. You think I want to cover Jake Paul? I don't yes, want to cover actually. Jake Paul. I got to research Jake Paul, and I've grown to like him kind of. Can I say I this? Grown to I've like had to, I've had to, I'm dude, watching I've right been researching the Paul brothers. I've been following the KSI. I've been watching all the interviews. God damn, those guys have become likable, and I hate uh, it. I like him in 10-second clips on YouTube I, shorts. I, I see I a couple 10-second like, videos. Dude, I, like I actually like Logan Paul from watching some of his recent stuff. I'm like, god damn it, this guy's annoying, but god damn, he's I'm, good. He gets I'm gonna get it. Get her a drink. 
Like, have you guys tried their drink yet? Prime? Of I course. Like it's it. going to take down Gatorade. I even believe it. <laughs> I believe that it's going to take down Gatorade now. Hey, and here's the thing. <laughs> Knowing Jake Paul, do you think he actually even wrote this shit? No. no, but the whole point was to cause all this media commotion. Right, yeah. But it was honestly, it, it, it wasn't that bad. I, all, I thought I was expecting it when I saw the video. I was like, oh, God, this is going to be awful. And I watched it and I was like, this is not that bad. Yeah, honestly, that I was, expected. His, his voice doesn't sound bad, which is good. I yeah. mean, it's it's really it's not even a really good lyric. It's, mixed it's just very well. It's basically a, a fun way for the youth and for people to talk about that he's calling out Dana White for a fighter pay. Yeah, here's That's basically what it here's is. the thing. This is so why funny, this dude. is why people so are gonna, this is why people are gonna like it. And I'll give him this. Okay, his voice sounds good. Okay, he's rapping on beat because trust me, I've heard a lot of rappers where their voice mm-hmm. don't sound good, so I can't I can't fucking listen. He's rapping oh, on beat and the beat is really good. So no matter tweet? what, uh, someone's song, if someone's song is good, I'm going to tell you right now, 95% of it has to do with the beat. Yeah. If the beat's not good, it doesn't matter if you have the best lyricist ever. If the beat is trash, no one's going to fucking listen to it because you can't get into it. So the beat's really good and his voice sounds good and he's on beat. Do I think he's good? No. Do I care? No. Do I ever want to watch this video again? No. Do I want to drink the rest of my Gatorade instead of watch this video? Yes. Give him a grade. Give no, him a grade. Get, no, get from a, a to F. Honestly, you this is an probably, honest grade. Yeah, from this is probably like a, a B. Wow. Wow. Because it's a good video. Jake Paul? It's a Dude, good video. God gives you a B. By, by the way, like I said, okay. I'll give it to him. He sounds good. He's, he's on beat. The beat is good. Um, but I just don't fucking like him. And it's the lyrics aren't like really the best. I don't know. By the way, when Nick, oh, when Alex was talking about, look, I hear a lot of people with beats. I hear a lot of people rap. And they're never on time. The whole time I kept thinking was when Alice texted Nick and said, Hey, all you have to do on beat is go. We out here. MMA <laughs> podcast. Like, can I do, <laughs> can I not do this, please? <laughs> He's like, I can't, I can't I do it, bro. Do it. I can't, you're Honestly, entire. you know why? You know why? Cause I was, I think I was like driving somewhere. I, I stop, just man! There. I swear to God, bro. Stop! I was like going us. somewhere. You told no, no, us no, why. brother, brother, brother. brother. You, you said you were. You said you were doing this. <laughs> oh yeah, butt smashing with your wife. That's what you uh, said. I wasn't doing that. No, no, no. That was a cool guy <laughs> lie. That was a cool guy lie, and I just want to make you guys think I was cool. <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on. Uh, he was clapping my cheeks. That's what it was. Guys, Chael Sonnen gets all charges dropped by his assault. Not a new story because it wasn't real. Those guys no. were dummies. And this guess is what? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, people are uh, don't know about this. Chael was charged for assault. I forgot where it was, maybe Vegas, but I believe some guys are – I don't know exactly what happened. They were messing with his wife, and he basically stood up for his wife and maybe put a little pressure on the guys that were bothering his wife. Look, we would all do the same thing. I think at a certain point, a judge is probably like, all right, these douchebags, sorry, no assault charges. What is there to be dropped? Nothing. The man's a champion, people's champ. Yep. Talk about someone that also is so good at branding that has rebuilt his whole career after having some of the worst things happen to him as, as an athlete. Yeah. Like, seriously, crazy. Losing in the, the last minute of fighting the GOAT. You know, like smashing him out and then losing in the last minute. Crazy. And then, and then what was it? Uh, getting hit like straight up with yeah. uh, steroid like usage and then also losing a political election. But the reason, Wait, but the reason why the office? He ran for in Oregon, yeah. Oh, okay. But the reason why <laughs> he, he is like very likable is because he's like, yeah, I fucked up. I did up. it. Doesn't try to yeah, lie. What are you gonna do? He's like, yeah, I was, I was more juiced up than a Capri Sun. Remember when he says that line? <laughs> like when, when he, he said that, that line, kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, because it was during the time when nobody was talking about like Admi- admitting it. Nobody would ever, yeah. ever. And then you get a guy like Chael Sonnen, who was probably the most prolific steroid user at the time, and I was like, yeah, bro, yeah, it's I got refreshing. Popped. Everybody, it was great. everybody was using that shit though, bro. Oh yeah, like, yeah, bro. If, if you I'm popped, too, if yeah. you popped, not GSP. Like, if you popped GSP, before like the Reebok era. Like, you can't even be mad, bro, because everybody was on that shit, bro. Hey, bro, do you really think – I I honestly think if I had to put my life on the line, I don't think GSP was juicing, bro. I would never bet my life because I'm going to die anyways soon, so I don't want to, like, die faster. But um, What do you mean I, soon? Define soon. What is your what is your definition of soon? Within uh, 100 years. I think I'm going to die at 100 years. Lit, lit, lit. Okay. Honestly, I think I think I might okay, live lit, to 100. Lit. I'm not gonna lie. That's tight. But anyways, um, <laughs> I if I had a bet, it's like say someone bet me 50 bucks, okay? Yeah. Because that's the types of bets I like to do. I would say 100% GSP was on juice. Hey, bro, I'll bet wow. my life for your 50 bucks right now, dude. 
Let's so. figure it out. He he like at one point manhandled Matt Hughes, who was on uh GSP dude GSP just look at him in his prime he was so yeah. jacked bro right right when you saw that comes in um yeah I'm gonna retire I'm gonna retire and then retire. he came so back Nick, defend he... that defend that no oh, dude no but then look who we fight I we love Michael Bisping whoa but that was bro. a fight for him to fucking win he even fucking went up and almost killed himself to get fat to fight Michael Bisping because that was a fight that he was able to win. You really think he was going to come back and beat Kamar Usman? Eh. So it's like, bro. Hey, low key, if they fight, I think I got GSP, bro. Bro, no. Okay, if they fight, you just GSP got more ways to to finish. All right. Yeah, that's true. I should take that back. Take Take it back. back. All right, guys, let's get into our quick pick picks with Alex Lip Got Acosta and Nick (laughs) the ear. Uh, I like this main event, my friends. We got to fight the UFC Apex. We got Jack Hermanson, the Joker. Ooh, versus this is a crazy on actually crazy psychopath human being. Been watching more videos on him. Crazy person, Strickland. Uh, this is a great fight. I feel like one of you guys might actually called this fight before he was even made. I'm not sure which one of you, but I do remember this. Probably Alex. Yeah, it's probably Alex. This being discussed a while back ago. Um, I like this fight a lot. I'll go make the first pick. This is a. Uh, as a fan of me, I really like Sean Strickland. I just want to keep seeing him rise. But, man, the Joker ain't no joke. So I'm going to have to go with probably – is he? I think he might be the underdog on this. But I'm going to go he is the Jack, underdog. I'm going to go with Jack Hermanson. I'm going to go with the dog. Nick? Uh, I think on paper uh, – I I, I'll say this. My final pick is I think Sean Strickland – is going to be able to, you see how I'm sure I am. I think Sean Strickland is going to be able to, uh, is to pull this out. It really depends on like, I think Sean Strickland has a very good, I think he has a pretty decent takedown defense. And I don't, I don't know if Jack Hermanson is going to be able to survive the onslaught as far as the high volume and the weird pressure of Sean Strickland's boxing to be able to continuously uh, take him down and keep him down. But I also don't think Jack Hermanson needs to take him down to win either. So I, I think my gut is telling me Sean Strickland. My brain is telling me Jack Hermanson, but my gut is telling me Sean Strickland. So I'm going to go with Sean. So, okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. He's like my uh, brain. And then my left knee is saying knee. maybe Strickland because he has never had knee issues. <laughs> then my left knee um, it's like GSP didn't do steroids. I don't know <laughs> what I'm picking, guys. Uh, Alex, show um, me how to pick in a concise way. Well, okay, so here, um, I don't <laughs> the the guy that thinks he's kind of trying to short it up. Bellator, too. the James yeah. Gallagher, yeah, whatever. Jack Hermanson looks just like him, so I'm never gonna pick him. <laughs> um, so Sean Strickland, not really. he looks just like bro. Oh, can we say something about James Gallagher? Does he not? Why look does he like look him? so little? He looks so little. He looks smaller he? than he. Yeah, he fights be, at 35. Yeah. But he looks, but he, doesn't, like, he, looks, he looks way smaller than the 35. I don't know what yeah. it is. He's he so a big skinny. Head. Big head, skinny a big body. Hey, head. In this picture right here, bro, Jack Hermanson looks literally identical to him in his face. But anyways, I kind of like Sean Strickland now. He was getting on my nerves a little bit, but he's so crazy. And then like, I'm just like, hey, he's kind of cool. He's kind of fun. So I, I, I got Sean Strickland. Did you hear yeah. what Michael Bisping said about it? He was like, I think it's a, uh, it's an act. That's what he was saying interesting because he like really them pretty frequently. but have you yeah. seen the strickland like just him randomly with like people like full-on sparring and talking that shit like well, just... i think that's him i think that is him yeah but i but like the other stuff about how i don't know it, it, just what michael is he the one that saying. says the thing about having a gay son yes that he would like beat his son <laughs> like yes. what that's i think wild... that's a couple fighters i think a couple fighters i think that's exclusively with all fighters <laughs> it's almost all fighters and rappers uh, Kobe and Cat Williams, uh, Tracy yeah, Morgan. Oh, That's what it is. Yes, <laughs> we have uh, Pudahle Soriano versus Nick Maximov. Um, Nick, I need to think about this a little bit. So, will it you go first? Are you gonna go with your your friend Nick or are you gonna go nah, with bro. Soriano? I'm going, I'm going brown guy all day, bro. Soriano, I think he's 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 very talented, he could take a beating and, and still hang in there. He's really tough, even when he's like losing. So uh, I feel like, yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna do very well against this guy. So and keep in mind, I'm gonna go Punaleli. Punaleli. No, no, also, to remind you, DraftKings is doing a bet. If you bet Sean Strickland winning, and then there's a parlay on any Brown guys after that, you can win some money. Uh, Alex, what do you think? 
I got Nick Maximoff. Um, wow, why? This guy has a really good wrestling background. He's really okay. good. This guy's an 85er. He's fought at light heavyweight, and he's literally fought on heavyweight. Like, I've watched him. Like, the his UFC debut, I think, was light heavyweight, but then on the contender series, it was at yeah. heavyweight or some crazy shit like that, or light heavyweight. Like, this kid's down with it. He's part of the Nick Diaz army as well, too. Um, I'm a big fan of him, and, like, I, I think uh, I think he's going to do really good in the whole weight class. So, um, he fought someone. Uh, you know that um, that boxer girl? Her name was something, Amanda Cooper. She was, like, a, a, a boxer. She lost to Mackenzie Dern when she missed mm-hmm. weight, like, for, like, 90 pounds. Uh, her husband, <laughs> who was a really good striker and a really good wrestler, that, that was his last opponent, and Nick, like, did really good work with him. So I think he's going to win. Wow. Okay. Uh, and I think I'm going to go with Soriano. I go with the Brown guy. I think he lost, I believe to Brad Allen, his last fight. And that was his first yeah. loss. So yeah. I'm thinking he bounces back pretty strong. I mean, losing after what going like 10 and zero, and then losing your first fight, I think fighters just have a pretty good bounce back. So I think he's what do they say about, fight. what do they say about Brown fighters? They never, what do they would say after a lose after, after a loss, after a lose. When a Brown fighter loses, they never go. They yep. they want to go back to town. Yep. yep. They to they town brought back. back. To town was, brought up. That was the answer I was looking for, but it's fine. They always right, bounce back. Let's do some quick picks on these. Finish out the main card. We got our boy on the left. We got <laughs> Shevkat <laughs> Rachmanov. <laughs> no, say his name. Why are you laughing at that? Because because I could tell he's like we got, and you can just know <laughs> where head. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we got our boy Shevkat Williams. Rav Kamanov uh, versus Carlston Harris. Uh, Nick, who you got? I actually am not too familiar with either of these fighters. This what country is from? Kazakhstan. Yeah, it's the Asian face. Doesn't Asian it? face, Russian Asian last face. name, Kazakhstan. Hybrid. Um, he beat that guy Michelle Prezeris in those last fight. I think you say Michelle Beadle. Michelle, he beat the shit out of Michelle, Michelle Beetle. Beetle. <laughs> nah, man, like he, he has a pretty, he's fought some impressive names that I think are pretty, pretty tough. So I, you know, I think this guy, he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. And he, he looks kind of like me as far as like the eyes. So I'm going to go with Shafkat. All right. And Alex, who do you got for this fight? I got Shafkat because he also wears a really cool hat when he wins. And you guys know me. If you wear a really cool hat like Rafael or Habib, I'm going to go over to you every time. Let's go, I'm gonna have to, let's go with Shavakat because uh, Kazakhstan all day, baby. Let's go. Let's put them on the map. I'm so sick of Borat. I want more of these guys winning in life. All right. Sam Alvey. Ooh. Versus Ooh. Phil Haas. Ooh. Ah, uh, you know what? You, you, you know oh. what this fight is? Anytime Sister. I pick any single one of these guys in their fights, they lose. always lose. lose. <laughs> <laughs> and always, it's always like when they, I think they're winning and then they lose. Like when Phil Haas fought Chris Curtis. A KO. I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. And I, he was winning that fight, and, and Chris Curtis just was like, "All right, I'm gonna take 75 punches and then knock you with three and KO you." So I, I think Phil Haas is the. Look, I'll make this. I'll make this. I'm gonna go I'll Phil I'll make this easy for all of us. Sam Helvey is six zero and one, in his last seven fights. Yeah. Wait, six zero yeah. and one. He has no law. He has a draw and six losses. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, you said 6 0. Oh, oh, it's 0 oh, 6 and 1. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait, he's not, he doesn't win 6. He goes, two. is it? <laughs> I'm going to go Phil Haas. I'm going to say this. Haas. I love Sam Alvey because he's a nice guy, but honestly, that, he is one of the most boring fighters I've ever watched before. Wow. Shot to eye. So I don't even, I'm not even really a big fan of Phil Haas, but I think Phil Haas is going to win this fight. Guys, you already know the rule. You dye your hair blanc, you win. Let's go, Cisco. Uh, I'm going to go with Phil Haas. Also, I've been following him forever since he was at Albuquerque. So he's one of those guys. I'm like, I just want him to, you know, thrive. Oh, yeah. this is a good fight. All right, oh, guys. Shit. We have uh, uh, Tresson Gore. It's, I believe, is that Frank Gore's son? No. Yep. And then versus Brian Battle, who I remember from the contender. Uh, not a contender. Uh, Ultimate Fighter. Ultimate Fighter. Was, I liked him in that a lot. Alex, they, go ahead. Did um, they both fight Ultimate Fighter? No, they so did, I'm gonna right? I'm gonna say this. This was supposed to be the finale for the Ultimate Fighter. That's right. Trayshawn injured his like shoulder or something like that. It's the right. black dude, right? Yeah. Yep. And he and he he reminds me of a young Anthony John uh Anthony the power, Johnson. Yeah. Power um, I Johnson. honestly, dude, Trayshawn Gore, he is when he's 
on and he strike him and he is fast like i said he's just like a 185er anthony johnson i think he's gonna knock out brian battle i do like brian battle but i think trey sean gore is gonna win this fight i didn't know this was happening this is pretty cool i'm gonna have to go with uh brian battle i think trey sean i think if i remember from the ultimate fighter i didn't see him do a lot of work on the ground it was all knockouts and tkos so i'm gonna go with brian battle because to me he's more of a complete fighter and he's just goofy he has a goofy body and i like it uh nick I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Trey Sean. It sucks they don't have a picture of him. Yeah, yeah. He, he also was like in the TV shows. So that's weird. They don't have a photo. <laughs> they gonna so, they gonna grab a still? Not yeah. even a still. They had so much marketing for that show. It was like the comeback season. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll finish off with Julian Rosa at featherweight versus Steven Peterson. Peterson. Uh, Peterson. Uh, Nick, who do you, who do you like? I, I uh, like clavicle I'll, tattoo or no clavicle tattoo. I like Juicy J, bro. Anytime he fights, I, I'm a I'm a fan of him every time he, he uh goes out there. So uh he just beat Charles Jordan, who's really fucking good. I think you gotta go with the hot hand. You gotta go with Julian Arosa here. Let's do it. Alex, who you got? Yeah, I got Julian Arosa. Steven Peterson, it's like, bro, you really like Superman that much? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Yo, really? we gotta get him on the show, and that's the only <laughs> question we can ask him. Well, I the only, no, what, what honestly, if you ask him what if you ask steven peterson hey you a big superman fan and he goes what what, what, yeah. do you mean? what is that Yo, what do you mean? because he, he, he if i remember correctly <laughs> there was a fight that he just recently had where they went to go do the glove touch and he <laughs> faked it and did it and if you do that i am never a fan of yours that's some bad karma bro that's yeah, bad so, mma karma uh, i'm not with that shit so i will never pick him uh, so julian rosa even though i thought julian rosa is gonna win anyways but i would still never pick steven peterson bro oh dude he also has a 41 inch reach compared okay that's not bad uh that's his leg reach uh <laughs> <laughs> i was like dude why is his arm reach so short 41 inches 41 this guy's inches to 70 has a 30 inch reach advantage reach <laughs> <laughs> Yo, think about Stupid. that. Is there any advantage to a fighter that has a 40 inch reach? If, oh. if arms, could you? <laughs> yeah. You know, hard it be to lock your hands like this? Is that it? You, <laughs> you just get body lock on somebody? You're like, oh, yeah, hey, if that motherfucker. Get if that, my fingers. <laughs> if that motherfucker does squeeze on you, though, bro, you ain't not letting him. Like, your body's going to be uh, this thin if he's squeezing you. Uh, I'm about to go with uh, Juicy J. I like that. I'm more of a Marvel guy as well, so you know, you know, how, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck DC. DC. Yeah, DC sucks, bro. Uh, not, guys, not that Daniel was our Fernando, yeah. that was our show, guys. Uh, we're gonna be back next week. We're gonna recap that uh, this fight, and we're gonna see if the Superman Tech guy wins or doesn't. Who knows? Uh, we love you very much. Make sure you follow our Instagram at we out here mma you can follow alex at lift god you can follow nick at nick the ear make sure you like this video make sure you subscribe and answer we haven't done this in a while alex what questions should they answer down below in the comments if you go to the store and you're uh -huh. gonna buy a family share size of m&ms okay are you gonna get the peanut bag or are you gonna get the normal bag Oh, they should have showed us an example. Man. Oh, I don't buy them. I buy the peanut bag. That's let's, what I'm asking. Uh, let's go. Guys, hit that music right now. And that's how we end this show. It's always a wonderful question. Make sure you answer it down below. We love you. Once again, use the code WE OUT HERE for Manscaped. Peace.